If there's one issue you're gonna have while you're using the Sony ZV E10, it's gonna be the battery life. Oh no! We suck again! The battery life absolutely is, is one of my least favorite things about the Sony ZV E10, but because of the size of these little small FW50 batteries, I actually don't mind and it keeps the setup really small and lightweight. But if you're live streaming with your camera and you're using the clean HDMI out or whether you're using like the internal USB for live streaming, the battery is not going to get you far at all. The battery life is still the same on the A6100, A64 and all the rest, but you need to get an AC adapter that's going to plug into the wall so that you're good to go or plug into a battery bank either way. I'll give you my favorite options for both. Now, despite what everybody else talks about when it comes to getting these AC adapters, you're going to see a ton of crappy ones on Amazon and it's only one third third party one that I kind of recommend, maybe two. Uh, and a lot of people use the Go9 version. That's a third party one. It's like 20 bucks and I get it. It's $20. You figure like, great, it's a great deal until it's not. Because I have bought one of these cheap AC adapters before and literally fried my camera and the price tag that it costs for repairs was not good. So the best AC power adapter that I found and I've been using for some years, even before the camera came out, and that's honestly this Sony branded one. It's not sexy and the price definitely isn't also. And it is a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit clunkier, but it's definitely more well built. Now the dummy AC power adapter is connected. Unlike some of the other ones, like I like the company Rice Up that I usually get if I am gonna get any third party ones that I've had the most success with them over the years, they will have where it kind of detaches similar to to the ZV-1. When it comes to some of these other third-party ones, the thing is, is that there's no way, there's no quality control or anybody to check to see is this going to work or not. So the way that you connect these are super simple. It would go in the exact same way that you would connect your regular battery and there is a door on the bottom of the camera. So when you put it in, the door will actually close. The other cool thing with the Sony cameras is that unlike like some of the Canon brands, you actually can leave the door open and it would still work. So it's not a big deal if the door is closed or not. Now you'll notice that when this is connected up to the camera that with the Sony branded ones, you're not seeing any battery icon and that's normal. So there's no actual power cells in the battery. It's a dummy battery. So it'll work fine either way. But just so you know, don't freak out if you don't see the battery icon. But let's say you don't want to actually buy an AC adapter and you just want to use something else. Maybe you're in a pinch traveling or whatever. I did this when I was in New York giving my talk at People of Video and it works just fine even for extended periods of time. And that's using the internal charging method or that USB-C port on here that's already in your camera to run it off the battery. But you're going to be doing so with a battery bank. Now, I love this one by Charmast. It's really, really cool. It's a 10,400 milliamp battery, which means it is going to last for a very long time. It has the two uh, USB type A ports on here, and then it has a USB-C as well as a USB micro, and it can charge via USB-C or USB type B micro. And and so this is just a bang out charger. Really, really neat. I'll put links down in the description for uh, if you want to pick this one up. Because I often have and am using my Rode Wireless Go 2s, the included uh, USB-C cables is usually how I will power this. And it's just long enough to uh, be attached to the tripod and I don't have any issues. Unlike the other method, there is an actual battery symbol because there is an actual battery in the camera. But you do want to start off with a fully charged battery or at least maybe only one of the notches is gone. That's how I found to get the most and the best performance out of this. Now, don't forget, you can top off the battery in your camera. So once you turn your camera off, it will start actively charging. And the USB-C port, I find it's just way more convenient than the USB type micro uh, ports that you'll see on other cameras. But uh, this will still help you. Usually if I'm traveling or going in the airport, whatever, I'll top off my camera like I do my phone. So I usually only carry two batteries. So I'm curious, would you use the battery bank version or would you use an AC power? power adapter version to get that unlimited battery life on the Sony ZV-E10. But if you want to make sure that you're going to get the best when it comes to recording on this camera, you need the right memory card. And there is a such thing as the right memory card. Make sure you check out the video on the screen. It'll give you all the details.